imagine a situation. A plane is flying across the sky whose force is given by this vector and then suddenly wind starts blowing towards the plane whose force is given by this vector. You are given a task of finding out the motion of the plane after this interaction. Oh wait, you don't know what a vector is? In order to understand vectors, you first need to know what scalars are. Scalar has a magnitude and tells you how much of something there is. Just like the volume of the liquid in your milkshake, the distance of you from your house, or the time elapsed since the start of this video. But vectors on the other hand have one additional quantity, that is the direction. Imagine your friend tells you that he is driving at a speed of 30 km per hour. But that doesn't make sense. But what if he tells you he is driving at a speed of 30 km per hour towards the lighthouse? Now it makes sense. Just like that, the quantity weight, it also has a direction that is towards the ground. Since it is a magnitude and a direction, it is also a vector. Similarly, the vector quantity thrust lifts up a rocket engine towards the sky, away from the ground. Now imagine you want to navigate yourself to the bathroom. It is quite rare that in order to reach somewhere, you may move straight ahead towards it. Suppose you take 4 steps to the right and 3 steps to the front in order to reach it. The arrow from your initial to the final point represents the displacement vector of your movement. Using our coordinate system, the displacement vector can be represented as this. The terms 4x cap and 3y cap are the components of this vector. Since it forms a right angle triangle, we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find the length of the vector, which is its magnitude, and in this case, it's 5. Just like how scalars can be added and subtracted, vectors can be too, and there are some laws for, for it. One of them is the triangle law of vector addition. Suppose you have two vectors, vector A and vector B. In order to add them, what you have to do is take the tail of vector B and place it at the tip of vector A. Now the third side of the so formed triangle gives you the sum of vector A and B which can also be called the resultant. To find the magnitude, you can use this formula and minus sign for subtraction. If they are in component form, we can simply add their individual components and get the resultant. Now you know all the knowledge about vectors that you need to solve the problem at the start of this video. Now let's get back to our solution. So the situation was the plane was moving with this vector and then wind starts blowing with the force of this vector. To solve this, we will be using our same familiar coordinate system. The thrust of the plane was given by this vector. We can plot a point on a graph using this vector and draw an arrow from the origin to this point. This is the vector representing the force of the plane. Similarly, we can draw a vector for the force of the wind. Now, this is the thrust of the plane and this is the force of the wind. Now, we can use the triangle law to add these two vectors. Now, using the triangle law, the resultant of these two forces is given by this third arrow which is directly across the skin towards the right. Now, from our graph, the magnitude of this force is found to be 6, that is 6 Newton. So, the final answer to our problem will be that the plane will be moving with a force of 6 Newton towards the right.